Alright, hey everybody. Mike again from MontanaTroutFishing.blogspot.com. Just going to do another tutorial today uh, on tying flies. This one is going to be the girdle bug. And as you can see in front of me here, I've got all my materials already made and ready to go. I've got the lead on the hook and tied in. Number 10, Umqua U203. Um, three rubber legs which is going to actually account for six and two sets of antennas and my six inches of uh, chenille here um, I cut the rubber legs from this these come in a, big, a great big bundle and I just wanted to show you what that looks like um, so here we go <clears throat> this is what we're going to tie alright this is the girdle bug um, it's kind of a, well I better not say too much about it, <laughs> to be honest. Um, just another common fly, to say um, the least. But uh, this is what she looks like, and got these rubber legs and antenna, and it's supposed to represent a stonefly. Uh, I guess that's pretty true, and it's just basically a big opportunity for a trout to come up and get a big, tasty, protein-packed meal. Um, I'm going to start by putting my hook in the vise. And I'm going to be once again using uh, 6 aught um, uni thread in black. So I'm just going to retie this in real quick, rewrap. Okay. All right, and for this again, I'm going to start at, on the last rib or that last. Um, piece of lead there so um, I can get some good ties out of that. I'm going to start by doing the back antenna got my two little legs right there um, just, this is kind of a tricky part but I always do my best and end up coming out pretty good do a pinch wrap get them secured and you gotta kinda physically move these legs around on these with these rubber legs they do move quite a bit if you want them to before you get them secured so it's always it's kinda like working with clay or something you you still have some leeway before it dries up um, now I want to get these legs secured pretty well um, I don't like them coming out on me the trout hit them very hard. And once I've got those tied in fairly good, I'm going to cut them. And once again, just like the woolly bugger, you don't need to be exact here because uh, the thread does tie over it pretty well. Okay, so that's what I've got for the legs in the back. You want them kind of hopping up like that. Um, I think that looks the best and these legs do a great job of moving underwater um, really really makes the trout want to eat it looks like they're swarming around down there okay so I'm not going to go too far up here because I've got uh, three other sets of legs to put in until I get to the front so I'm actually going to do my first set pretty close to those two back antennas and the best way i found is to take take your one rubber leg with, with your left hand and lay it across okay, you can do a gentle wrap to get that puppy secured you see that one wrap and it's already it looks perfect so these really do need to be tied in a little bit better so i just kind of cross right on top of them without bending the legs down too much so i got two or three wraps there i'm going to go up now to about half the hook and I'm going to do my second uh, pair of legs. Same way here. Just put that right in the middle. And I'm going to do another wrap. And that should be good. Sometimes you'll notice if you wrap it wrong, one of these legs will start sticking up like this or like that. But like I said, this stuff's like wet clay. Um, you can either undo a wrap or you can pull it out a little bit. You can, 
You know, there's so many manipulations you can do to get that back on track. And it's not very important right now, but I always try and start great. Um, there's another technique coming up when we add the chenille that's going to really straighten those legs out for you and keep them there. Okay, now before I get too close up to the eye, uh, I do want to add another leg, and then I've also got to have room for my two front antenna or antennae, whatever they call them these days. Um, so I need to back up a little bit on that one. And just the same thing, one wrap up. Bring that around, maybe I can get it to stay. Very good. So I'm going to do another one. And one more going back. All right, good. Now, bring your thread up to just above those last two. And we're going to put the last two antenna on. Okay. I like to, with this way, I can just lay them on top. And do kind of a cheating pinch wrap. And look at that, I got them perfect. So you just want to get those locked in really well. Move them to how you need them to be. We can always cut and adjust. Um, do a couple more wraps to get those puppies secure. Pretty tight on the tension here. Okay. Now I'm going to clip off this. All right, so this is what we have so far. This is like the skeleton of the girdle bug without the chenille on there. Um, and I'll show you how to trim these up when we're done on what works best, I believe. Okay, so now we need to get back to the bottom of the hook without moving those legs too much around. So just take your time and dodge and weave and then get right back to the butt end right on those last back antennas or legs or whatever they are. Um, okay, so I've got my chenille here and just like my last video and working with chenille you need to pull that out so you've got um, a little bit of an anchoring to tie on to there and just like the woolly bugger we're gonna do the same thing with this uh, chenille here And like I said, don't worry about the legs too much right now. We can get another technique to get those on and uh, get them in place. Cut that chenille off. All right. And now, I just always wrap straight over. Um, some people, I guess, they go under and then around. I'm just going to go straight, straight under. Now here's the deal with these legs. If you can t if you can get this chenille wrapped right up to it, so it's almost bent in those forward, your next wrap is going to come around and tighten them. It's going to push that chenille right. It's going to push the leg right between the chenille there. Okay, and if you don't do it tight enough, not super tight or anything, but if you skip a wrap, for example, you're going to miss that opportunity to get that those legs like the way you want them. Um, and it also makes for a good looking girdle bug. So I'm going to keep on going. See there, it pushed the legs forward, but this one will bring them back. Perfect. Now I've got to bring this back up for me to see. And I guess I'm going to go lift the antenna up and go right up over the eye. Um, just like that, lift the antenna up and went right over to fill that eye. It doesn't matter if you if you want to do that or not. Um, a lot of people I don't think do that. They just leave a good, they don't bunch the eye up too much. Now that I'm pulling on my hook so much, I'm going to put my trusty hackle pliers, let that sit there, readjust my hook. And now I'm ready to see how these legs are moving for me. They kind of, they, they can work. They're in between that chenille, so it gives me plenty of room to move those around. And they'll stay once you get them. So 
Gonna get my antenna good. All right, now I'm gonna finish by not doing too many wraps, but I don't want, all I'm doing is securing the chenille. Um, I don't want to compromise the legs being bent out of whack. Some people use red thread to do this, or I suppose chartreuse thread would give it some, you know, some thorax look or section, segment look is the right word, the segments of the, the critter. But I'm just going to use black. Do another wrap to over them antenna. Do my wrap over my eye. And I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to I'll whip finish right now. Okay, whip finishing with these eye or these uh, antenna in the way is pain in the butt for me, so I kind of cheat. Um, oh, hackle pliers are right here. Take that off. I can cut the cut my chenille off because it's tied in. But like I was saying, for me to whip finish over the eyes, it's kind of a pain in the butt. So I'm just gonna grab my hackle pliers, put them together, and put them right over the back. So now, maybe hard to see from your angle, but I've got a perfect eyelet to whip finish over. Do my four whip finishes for a perfect girdle bug. I may have to trim the eye up a little bit on this guy, but he'll be in the water in days, catching me some big brown trout. Okay. So there's a girdle bug, and what we need to do now is get these proportions right with the legs. Um, you know, I think it's good to leave the the antennas longer than the legs. Um, some people don't, but I, I like it like that. It gives it plenty of realisticness in the water when they, the current hits them and they move. Um, so I think that is a good looking girdle bug. Now it's just getting the legs all even. Get them even over here. Just like you're cutting hair. And that's a girdle bug right there guys. Um, like I said, I caught some, well, I haven't said anything about this fly, but uh, let's just say that's all I'll say. So. Very easy to tie, um, it's often overlooked, and when it's weighted with the dropper nymph, it's just perfect. It goes right down, you don't have to use a lot of split shot. Um, comes in brown, I've seen it in white. Um, I've done a, I've done a, um, I'll use San Juan worm yarn and do a red stripe. Caught many fish on that as well. Um, I know somebody that that uses red for the gills, red thread for the gills, which is very realistic looking. All kinds of cool stuff. So I've even seen hackle wrapped around these guys. Um, but that's the girdle bug. It's a great fly. Number six hook. Um, be sure to get out there and try this sometime. You won't regret it. Um, so that's it for today's tutorial. Thanks for watching. And uh, I appreciate the 2,700 views that I've gotten over not even a year. Um, six, seven months going now. Uh, I'm very thankful for that. So stay tuned and I'll have some more tutorials coming up next. See ya.